Welcome in, welcome in, welcome, welcome back. in. Welcome back to Do It for the Story. I'm Stacy. I'm Morgan. And yeah, welcome back in, folks. It's been one week since you looked at me. I just I'm just immediately <laughs> jumped in my I'm head. <laughs> no, it's just been uh it's we're a little off. We're a little off. Let's because let's, 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 today let's, let's, the day let's, we're let's actually recording this is a Monday. It's a Monday evening. And the reason why we're doing that is obviously for scheduling purposes, but mm-hmm. Morgan is a single this week. I'm a single, which means, and, which means I'm childless for not, any of you. She, her, JD is still here. JD is still here. My sweet angel and our little diva is up at uh, Camp Orchard House and they're just having yep. a time with Lala and Grandpa. So... Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It takes a village. It takes a village, but also nice little respite and they're from mommy. So excited, they're like in heaven. Oh yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I just have extra time, so we're like, let's freaking record. Let's do and some. Let's admin. do our cheers before we. I know. Get too far in. Let's we do, do our, our cheers. cheers. Cheers to us. Cheers, Davis. Love oh. our vibrations. Vibrations. And as we say that, you know, cheers to us. Let's do a double cheers because this is the last episode of season one. Oh my gosh. And I want to just say it has been an absolute like experience of a lifetime to do this with you. It has been so fun. Oh, Diva. Yeah. It has I been, know. I've had a blast. It's been so fun. It's been a lot of fun. And I am so glad that like, okay, so our this is shout out to one of our main listeners um our good friend andy who he probably doesn't even remember this but like years ago when i tried to start a blog and you know as we were actually right before we just started this episode we were talking about how you know hard of a time i had reading as a kid so and like morgan yeah yeah so to think that I was like, you know, but I was just trying to be creative, try different yeah. things. But to think that I was thought I was going to be able to keep up with that and want to the writing, I am much more a verbal. Same. And yeah. I, so am I. And I mean, I always I never had a problem with writing or reading. I actually was fun fact. I am a journalism major. Yeah. No, it's Stacy focus in journalism like and when, new media. But yeah. the thing is, I didn't want that was part of the track. I didn't want to do writing journalism. I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. Right. So I did right. then got my certificate in broadcast journalism. And then I also got my minor in electronic media and film. I didn't want to edit. Mm-hmm. But it was, it's that's good why that we you have you, that. Brad. Yeah, that's why we have you, Brad. I was yeah. not, fun fact, Brad, I'll be honest. <laughs> Brad is our producer, I'll tell mm-hmm. you. When we in college would have to do our editing sessions and it'd be like a class where we do like a group project using pro tools and you needed to have a talent and we do like we dub we do a voiceover of like arrested development was one we had to oh my do. god so good i my hand shot up so fast to be vocal talent every assignment which meant when it came down to the final i was like i don't know how to use pro tools yeah that that was <laughs> me i hated like i had the gra- a graphic design class uh, my it was fine arts major and I had a graphic design class. I fucking hated it. Like I could, I literally had yeah, to have my just friend like, like help me do the work. I was like, this is, I, I'm not. I'm a storyteller into it. by yeah. voice, I and mean, yeah. I I don't don't put pen to paper. And it's even I, funny, I even how it, I even how out. I learn like the storytelling history classes in college, aced them. Like if they asked me to like, um, there the final would be essay writing. I didn't have to remember the facts. I just had to tell the story of what I'd learned, you know, whether Mm -hmm. it was like, Mm -hmm. and it was across the gamut. It would be everything from factual, like history to, um, the, yes, the communications, like, um, those, there might've been more theory behind some Mm -hmm. of the, but it was still, you had to know the theories, you know, you had to mention the theories and then describe it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. That's interesting. And this is, I want to put a big post-it on that. Yeah. I literally want to write this down. Oh, we have it in the episode. Wait, I can't. Because this oh, yeah. will be a good, I would love to do an episode where we talk about college mm. classes specifically. Mm. Like, anyway. Oh, yeah. I'll give I some a, tidbits. I'll give, I'll give you a quick. I have some questions because we took, yeah. we, so Morgan and I both majored in, my major at the college I went to was called Mass Communications mm-hmm. and Morgan's it was Communications. I think right? mine was mass communication. Was it? And then yours was design. Yeah, and what I was like your actual, went, my track like, went like marketing, advertising focus. Okay. 
And then my minor was um, fine arts. And that was simply because I was always really creatively strong. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, it was the one thing, you know, school just for me, it felt like, and this actually goes into our topic today, um, and, but we'll, we'll reset it with, you know, where we were in the beginning, but um, it, it always felt school, you know, was work to me. Like mm, it was always mm-hmm. like, it was hard, but also even the stuff that I enjoyed, like I knew I was supposed to do well. So I always had to like work really hard. And so even when in college, when I was picking a major, it wasn't like I was really thinking, you know, we, we had parents yeah. that were blue collar. So I wasn't thinking from, if I'm going to invest in myself because I was, I was paying for it. I had to work really hard to get in and get scholarships and stuff. Mm-hmm. If I had gone a track of, of something that I enjoyed or I knew I was good at, so I was, was, would enjoy it. Like I kind of just, I didn't know how to decide what I wanted to do. But the one thing I always gave myself was the fine arts piece, like high school, everything. I was always like, I'm good at it, but I also like it. And if there's classes, I'm going to allow myself to take it. Yeah. No, I, but thank God, because it's the one thing that's. You're 18 when you're going to college. Yeah. The way that we do college in the U S I think you know, to the people that everybody's different, but that's why the whole taking a gap year and I'm, I'm a huge going, doing proponent of a gap like year. My husband, my Joe, he didn't do the, he didn't graduate and then go to college a four year. Mm-hmm. He did like a two year and then a four year. And I also feel like that I want to. two is really different, you know? Totally. And I then because he, he worked in between that time. Exactly. Okay. That was what I was just going to say. I also want to say gap year. I feel like so often when people hear gap year, they're like, you're not going, you're You're not not doing anything. You're not doing anything. You're traveling. That's what you see on social media. That's what you see influencers do. But that like a lot of people's gap years, like our, our friends, their son is doing a working, um, uh, it's not even like an internship. I mean, it's a full on working program at Disney, um, Mm. like down in Florida and it's like phenomenal experience, but you know, he's doing that track and that's his gap year different versions to understand what he wants to do and realizing, you know, again, because they aren't privileged with money, they realize, and he realizes I, I, and it's an investment. I'm not just going to be, because it's also like, when are you going to get that time to get that type of, study maybe training right? real training right. i mean he's getting right. a lot of training we all know how that goes i mean he's but, not working at you know and i should say it's like this actual really cool program within like the hospitality space i think like it's a genuine he's not like working at the park selling popcorn he's oh no working so, yeah, within, it's like a business yeah, internship yeah light, it's whatever really cool but he's i mean doing i took a gap year college almost just shy of a year because I graduated in recession and couldn't get a job. I was like, where is this going? I was like, I was the bit landing. If anyone could see my face, I'm like waiting for her to you stick the landing. Here, yeah. I was like, and when? Uh, but anyway, so to my point, yada, 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 back to where I began. Our good friend, Andy, who is also one of our top listeners, gave us a Thank review. You, Andy. Andy and Annie, they are a married couple. And I'm, because I'm not going to share their last name. We adore them. We adore them. Um, and but we said we'd give a shout we out. We said we'd give shout out told us that you gave us a review and they gave it if you told us you gave us reviews so they're getting a shout out now guys yep they're getting a shout out and gabby our love uh friend we've been friends with darling darling gabby since since she was a greyhound exactly i was probably a a 16 i've been friends with gabby since i was 16 i'm now 40 and um but yeah so gabby shout out to gabs for doing a review as well and and, uh, tons of props so appreciate y'all but anyway back to andy so when i started doing the blog which is how we got on the tangent Mm. I was like, Andy's just, you know, him and I started our careers together and literally, right. you know, right out of college. Right. And so I, he's someone in my world that I really trust because I know where he's been and I know how he got where he is. And like, I really respect him. He's incredibly right. intelligent. You've st- I totally get that. Yeah. Like I have a friend like that as well, mm-hmm. career wise, where about the same age, same career journey, mm-hmm. had similar path, you know, mm-hmm. you understand to mm-hmm. each other's work and you're able to really be, 
I don't know. Just like, ourselves, have like this, trusted yeah, conversations. Yourself, trusted conversations honest. about where you want to go yeah. and what you're doing to yeah. get there, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, those are important friendships. And so, and then I'm just super lucky that he's insanely intelligent. So um, I was asking him, this was way back, when, again, when I was doing the blog in 2014. And he was like, you know, before you like invest in, you know, you just told me you're like already have started or you're doing all this research and you paid for this class and like da 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 like also just like do the thing because you like might end up not even liking it like just don't invest any money yeah in it. of course I don't listen to him because I was like I mean I kind of need like I kind of didn't know where to start right. and like so I do like I took a little and it wasn't like extreme well it was also different it was different. also different because you were like learning he, I was learning something that was very out that of may my have, like yeah, yeah was, very like, out of my element yeah. from the design I, like I was designing right, a web page right if I had taken a class it would have been weird yeah not like weird but I could have seen him say that and I would be like okay yeah. But I think for anybody who didn't actually yeah. your job have yeah. touched like but he was more so saying like you don't he wasn't saying really don't take the class but he was saying just like just also do the just thing. do the thing yeah because you don't even know if you're gonna like like it this is a totally different or like make sure to incorpor- incorporate like part of your current yeah. career but like you're and saying so you could put all you, you could take and all I these did. classes you and know I not am, like it and right. just like how many people do you know that art did a major and they're never using the major for their career I or couldn't count as a recruiter there's the majority or people that went to school and then took a job that you didn't need to go to school for yeah you know like yeah. totally yeah. anyway yada anyway yada. I'm saying yada so, yada yes. like yes. yeah so you get that where it's like oh the gap year yes it's like maybe if some if, if we encourage the gap year a bit more and 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 the options of what could be yeah the gap year um, should be the gap year which if it is didn't why just get I, such a bad rap it is bad people just put but, a bad spin on well, it well i'll tell you you know who's putting a good spin on it governor westmore maryland i, I thought you were gonna say <laughs> shelly <laughs> um no westmore um I've been incredibly impressed with his oh the program the um I, I don't know pro- service program it's a year of service or something. I don't know if it's a year, but it's definitely, I think it is a year, but it is exactly that, you know? And yeah, it's drawing folks in to giving them real experience, but also allowing them to give back to their community yeah. and learn and not feel like we were just so flippant throughout, you know, the nineties and early two thousands with, education and like oh it's just college mm-hmm. like oh it's just forty thousand dollars a year like, oh what the fuck God. are you talking about i know the first car that i owned was I nothing in comparison and to that's it's crazy thing too. they're just like just go and then the amount of people too where it was like i don't know and recruiting you see it a lot because you see a lot of resumes you know where you're like oh wow how'd you get from i i remember i used to be so genuinely curious of the person that mm-hmm. was like i actually um i went to med school and i'm like and now you're mm-hmm. trying now you're to get here. the job that I have. Right. No. Oh, yeah. not like no disrespect that you made a pivot, but like, damn, you went through all that. Went through all that. And so anyway, so why I even brought that up was because I wanted to congratulate us just on being. We did the thing. We did the thing. And we, we did it. We simultaneously researched while also buying the equipment and getting set up and like planning and yeah, all while we, have to we have these rip big the band-aid full-time off. jobs and like yeah. families and trust. We're not doing this because we're like, we've got some extra time. Got extra time and we've got extra money. It was like, just, there's it, well, truthfully, we were doing things. it because it's fun for us. It's creativity because that is the thing. A lot of our brain time is taken up by things that well, we don't, it, it's at fun. least for me, or that I it's enjoy. It's fun, but also. Talking about work. No, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying we're also, though, by doing this, holding ourselves to it would be a lot easier to say every Sunday is Stacy and Morgan time to do painting or whatever. Yeah. Like we love making go candles get together. To take a bike ride. Yeah. We love doing that creative. Like, yeah, but we are paddle. like, we want to do, yeah, we what are we doing? This. We could be doing exactly. that. Exactly. We could be doing, we could be paddling. I have not okay, paddled guys, with you this, this year. Season, first episode of last episode of season one, last episode of season one. Will season two happen? Dot, dot, Obviously dot. it's fucking happening. Okay guys. Um, we should but no, leave them on the cliffhanger. We should leave them on the cliffhanger, but I'm not going to do that to you because I can't handle it. Um, 
I'm not going to presume innocent our our listeners. I'm sad. If you know, you know. Anyway, so I just want to say congratulations to us, and also thank you so much for showing up. Like, yeah. thank you for tuning in. Like, people are watching. Like, we weren't even really thinking that people would be watching. Like, people tell us all the time they're, they they prefer to watch. Some people are like they're it. listening. I mean, the texts that we get of like the people that yeah, are constantly listening. Yeah, and like listening. we hope it's a good mixture again because just like in everything, like Morgan was saying, we just yeah. jump in. Jump we in. are talking about things that matter to us, matter to us, or funny us. to us, entertain us, or informative to us, or something yes, that we're like people need to know about this. Yes, we we you know that's yeah. really too. A lot of these topics are like we're like we have voices because we have this voices is what too. happens. Let yeah. me and I'll just use one random topic, but yeah. like really you could say especially any of the health related episodes. Yeah, those topics are years of text chains. <laughs> No years of, of calls, years of conversation, years of hot girl walks and, you know, what's going on. Like, where you're like, what the fuck? Like, mm-hmm. this is happening. And then when you find that one other person that says, oh, actually, I had that too. Or I also was experiencing this. Or I also had a traumatic birth. All that too. It's like people, you hear that all the time, I think, in depending on the career choices and interviews mm-hmm. with people. But seriously. One person. If I could help one twenty something feel more confident about their cystic, her acne. cystic acne, you know, or or give them the path to help them hopefully find a solution. All for the that. people, yeah, all the people that have um, reached out and said thank you so much for being so open about race or about my birth story. Many people reaching out about yeah that. about how to advocate for health. Yeah. A, an alarming response mm-hmm. and that's the thing we're like that we you hear it it's we're just two of the of the many of the many and in our house you know because we do have so many sisters we get to talk to each other about this stuff and we, we get to I have mean, a sounding board and we yeah. get to vent and relate and say, we what know would you that do? we're privileged and lucky in yeah. that and we've had other yeah. people tell us and friends tell us and that's part of this pod is that when we say welcome in welcome in is because we always one of the things that we've realized is that we are lucky totally. and we do come with this beautiful like gift of each other and our family and, and the like way we being were raised vulnerable and yeah being vulnerable. And like, but also like how we are us as sisters like, that's what i mean shaped yeah our bond yeah of like you know we would go to each other for things and not everybody has that not everybody has that but also every time we went to each other we also had the benefit of having like sister friends, you know, girlfriends mm-hmm. that were like sisters to us. So mm-hmm. if I'm going to Lindsay about something or Morgan that they may have experienced four years ago, they're also basically like we, I'm getting a sampling of other advice and crowdsourcing. They've saying, had we were, their we've friends. been doing deep yada, yada, yada. We've been doing deep crowdsourcing for years. Yes. And that's why we're like, we're 40 something women. And this went in the blink of an eye. Like, I look at you and I can close my eyes right now and be like, okay, I am on Wisconsin Avenue and I'm on top of a bar and I'm drinking and <laughs> like, it's like yesterday. Yeah. You know, and I'm saying Seriously. it goes by in the blink of an eye Seriously, and don't take any of yeah. that for granted. And but I want to share that. I want to share that. perfect segue into kind of how today too, it's like, mm-hmm. we want to share that. But like Morgan's saying, you know, when she says, I look at you and I'm thinking of Wisconsin Avenue, she'd be clear. She was the one on top of the bar. Now yeah, we both were different both times, but, were, but I was always, there was, was a specific <laughs> Wisconsin Avenue, yeah, consistent. consistent, but it was just one of our bits. It was like, get on the bar, get on stage. That was always one of our goals. Have fun. Have fun. And that our Do 20s it for the story. were also so Do it fun. For the story. And I think what was unique about us as siblings is because even with, you know, some of my other friends, when their siblings are super close, we lived, so Lindsay, Morgan, Kiki, and I, we all lived in D.C. from two, all together at the same time from 2000, I guess Kiki was actually there. Yeah, 2011. Definitely where the overlap was there. Kiki moved in 2011. 2011 until Kiki is still in, still D.C., in D.C. But, but I, I left, left in 2019 and, she, and yeah. you guys left in 2014. So we yeah. had a solid, what is that, three to four four years together? Four years. It's really kind and, of four because... But 
the other thing was, even before, you know, Kiki yes moved down later, Lindsay and I, we should set the, the tone of Lindsay and I were together in the city since to, like, she moved to Rockville in 2006 or seven. I started immediately going down there and hanging out with her and staying with her right, right. and doing the DC with her and then got my own place. I'm yeah, because you were commuting. I was commuting, and then I got my own place. So, yeah, you were commuting and staying down there, and yeah. I did the same thing. In 2010, and I start thing. commuting, and, and I'm crashing on your down. couch. So it was a lot of that time felt like it and was a really long And we were always time. doing this, like, if there was a concert, festival, right. just kind of a big party. Yeah, we were kind of... D.C. If, together. Right, for, and if yeah. Morgan and Kiki, or Morgan and Lindsay were in D.C., Kiki and I went to college together. Right. And then same and when, guys she, when were, I was right. living at and home and then she in was Maryland. in Baltimore, I was always there. You were coming here. We were and going And then we there. were going, yeah. So we had this unique thing too that we're all, you know, living in the same area. Again, same thing where our friend groups overlapped. Yeah. And in that same thing of crowdsourcing, it's like you're seeing so much, you're going through so much. And so we were talking about this the other day because <laughs> we were explained, someone asked, our, like, our, what, where, where did you guys live in D.C. Then, or yeah, something? Where did you grow up? And just and yada, yada, right. yada, we lived in D.C. together. Right, and yeah. so we were explaining that dynamic of how it was for a while, you know, the four of us older sisters living in D.C. And now, obviously, Morgan and I live like a seven-minute walk from each other. But um, it made Morgan, I think, when we were talking about topics and content, like, oh my gosh, we joke now. I, at least, one of my things is always, I call it crystal ball game. Like, if someone could have shown me this clip right now of my life, you know, six years ago, 10 years ago. You four like, years ago. Four years ago. You know, when you're in this situation, mm -hmm. to be able to see, like, oh, young Stacy, it's okay. It's you okay. know, you're going to be able to live in a place where you don't have to worry about, you know, are there bed bugs? Is somebody going to knock my door down? And not only you know. live there, but own the home. Yeah. Own a home with a yard and a nice car. And, and you, I'm serious, though. I like we. No, but it is. The it times was a grind. When we, it was a grind. And to, I mean. An absolute grind. We th we thought in our 20s, there was no way. We would oh, sit around the and be like, there's tears. no way we will ever own I homes. cried. And no way we will ever have anxiety I had around, mm -hmm. you know, like we talk about like our first apartment. Like, yeah, so we should set, well, let's set, yeah, the set the scene. Let's set the scene. Okay. So, Lin Lindsay, me, Stacy, Kiki, Kiki, Stacy should be the order. Um, all lived in apartments, in studio apartments on Wisconsin Avenue between these two apart two different in apartment Glover buildings Park. in Glover Park. So we bookended the Russian embassy. Yes. I lived in the Carolyn house in a studio apartment. <laughs> What was she that? got that money. I'm yeah, it was, rent was like a hundred dollars more. It was exactly it was a hundred dollars more. I splurged because I needed. Ooh, I splurged because I needed the extra closet space. Um, my rent was ten twenty eight when you moved in. When I moved in, and, and my was, goal was oh to God, pay like nine forty five. Now I can't imagine what, to pay like nine forty five, and then I saw this apartment, and it was just so much safer, so much cleaner. And it had these amazing walk-in closets. Yeah, it was and a cute apartment. I just, you know, if you know, you know. And it had that's a great so rooftop. Insane rooftop. We'll have to tell all those stories. Yeah. I mean, that was my move, man, the rooftop. Yeah, let's we'll um, say that for another one. Let's we'll talk about one. dating. But, um, but yeah, so we live between these two apartment buildings at Rush, Book and the Russian Embassy. And we each have our own studio now we could have totally gone in and got in a house together but like you have to understand in dc what we would have been able to afford would have been two bathrooms and we remember we played with that idea exactly and we played with that idea and mom and dad were even like oh maybe we should like invest in a property and like you guys pay us rent and like and then we were like you know what no this is our time well, to each also, have our own place yeah our own place which thank god and we our were own like, we're bathroom all and very close you know, we knew we're still we were siblings. so into each other's lives too. Yes. Yeah, that you're also exactly then you're in the part of your life where you're dating more, yes. where there's no parent to step in to, and you know, there's no coach, there's no referee. Right. Exactly. Not that we were fighting, but there's nobody to be like common exactly. denominator, you guys. And that plus, we did 
at one point look at that one house, which it worked out, then we didn't get it. And even That's the landlord, crazy. he was like, ugh, kicking, re- wishing we had been there earlier because yeah. he was like, what, I think it was guys that he was renting sure. it to. It's a beautiful home. Mm-hmm. And now I can't even imagine the rent of the place would have been insane. And we looked at moving in, all of us, but it wasn't a good time. It was like, the the just money was because I was looking for a place yeah, in Kiki, and yeah. we looked at this house, and the money that you would spend on the house, your own personal space, all of us living in a studio a to have your smaller. own bathroom yeah. and still your own space. Like a little kitchen, and like, we were Love like, oh, studio then life. the dishes and all the things you have to monitor on each well, other. So it's different when it's when it's a roommate, when it's your sister. Then you feel the, 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 like you're able to say, bitch, clean up your stuff. Exactly. And I was after college, I, you know, I had a great experience with all my roommates, like as people, yeah, yeah. but I, just like you're saying that it's different when you have a sister, especially when I grew up being Kiki's roommate, who's like yeah. super clean OCD. And I, I was, was not that person. Roommate. I was Lindsay's roommate. But I grew to be that person, you know, when mm-hmm. you are on your own that I'm like, I just... You know, I got to be the one to handle this. Yeah, and I handle it when I want to handle it. And it's that, honestly, and so the other piece of it, too, that, like, I'm glad about as well is that not only for that sibling dynamic, but also for the independence. Oh, totally. Like really owning. Like, think about we would have just fallen into, and even, even so, if we had done roommates, but also especially age order, we would have fallen into. Oh, absolutely. It would have been, Lindsay, Lindsay would have been paying the rent, pay the rent and we would have been giving her Kiki's a check. Kiki's always going to go to the grocery store. Yeah. Like me and you are going to always host every fucking party. I'm probably on like cleaning. I'm probably cleaning. Yeah, exactly. You're like, We're absolutely, you guys, I'm, I'm organizing. Managing. I put Morgan's together a whole chart. Morgan's calling the cable company. I'm calling the cable company. I'm, Morgan's doing I'm our knock, fighting. fighting. She's I'm getting, knocking the bills and down. And she's finding someone that's given us free cable. Yep. Morgan and Kiki are getting us free things yep. via dates. I'm definitely calling, like, anytime there <laughs> needs to be any sort of fixing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, totally. Morgan's like, oh, no, I've got a guy for that. Got a guy. Absolutely yeah. got a guy. Yeah, you and Kiki on that strong. And I was going to say, yeah, Kiki was like, oh, no, I just met him on the street. Yeah, he's coming over. Yeah, no, it's fine. Totally, um, but totally anyway, good. but anyway. that didn't happen. And we had our God. own studios, but I will say that just to tee up a little bit, not set the scene a bit more. Yeah. So Morgan lived in Carolyn House on the one side of the Russian embassy. And then Lindsay, Kiki, and I lived in Highview Towers. Highview Towers. I love, I, love, I love the name. I know, Highview Towers. On the other side of the Russian embassy. And if you know, you know. You know a you couple know. of my friends, we shared that Highview Tower experience. Um, Jesus Christ, that place was hot. But Lindsay lived there first. Freaking oven. And then I, Kiki and I ended up moving in at the same time. Yep. Um, in our own separate places because I was already living in D.C., but I broke my lease. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And then Kiki and I tried to find a two-bedroom, but that was so much harder at the time. Yep. Because same thing. We would have done the same thing. Kiki and I knew we could live together, great, but we would have fallen back into that college dynamic where, Yeah. The house, the apartment would have been spotless. <laughs> that bathroom been clean. Kiki would have been cleaning. Yep, doing cooking, and I would have been like, "Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give you cash. Did you go to the grocery store?" Yeah, exactly. And you know, but so again, to continue to just like set this, but not only set the scene, but also when we were prepping for this episode and we were laughing about how we had, you know, this new friends that we had met, we were explaining this. And so then right. Stace and I were thinking about the stories, but also then we were thinking about, you know, if I knew then, you know, the things that were stressing mm. me out mm-hmm. in my twenties mm-hmm. and to really understand, um, what's valuable and what isn't valuable and like i'm not it's not regret yeah it's just really uh, like things that i wish i wasn't stressing about i yes. would have i would say if i could tell my younger self yes and and it's hard when you're in it yeah. totally realize that because i do remember even dad one time saying that those words to me like i know this sounds like a big deal now or i know it sounds like a lot of money right now mm-hmm. but trust me in the long run, because I was, you know, it was one of my 20 moments. I was crying to him about the car breaking down or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, in the long run, it's not a big deal. Now, and it's so true. I'm like, and I think it's kind of like my little life, like my, oh, yeah, like a couple yeah. grand is not a big deal. Yeah. It, it, not saying that sounds super, but I mean, compared to me literally like that, I don't have From this. that time where you, know? you, we were literally constantly, you know, you're con- we were constantly checking our bank accounts to see 
do you know do I have 50 bucks like that kind yeah, of because shit. So and you it, yeah it's also the I think like you're saying you're checking your bank account you're worrying about those stresses but it's also those learning because it's your 20s everybody's adulting you're out on your own for most people it's after college you're 22 right you're like what am I doing with my life so you're grappling with that what now and then for us, it was a fucking recession, so that was a great time to get a job. Yeah. But it's like if you don't, those 20s, that's the foundational, if you don't get your shit right with those things that stressed you out then, they're, they've got to still be stressors then for you in your 30s, your 40s, like beyond, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, well foundationally it's those are the first time you're usually thinking about us in your 20s it's like it's never too late to try to yes rein it in exactly but no you're spot on that like those things are all and that's part of why i am you know thankful that we did get that time to all live alone because totally you, we really you really got to check all the boxes of life yeah. You know, a little bit of taste, at least, of kind of like all the things to come yep. when you're responsible for your own place. Yep. Um, and anyway, so we just felt like that we were like, you know what, let's let's talk about our 20s and let's go back to, you know, some of the things that were like, I wish, you know, if what I what I think of that moment, then oh what I think God. of it now. I first mean, apartment. Let's start there. Oh, my God. My first apartment. I was so proud of myself, as I should have been, right? And yeah. I can even tell you, like you were saying, your first apartment was how much? 10, 8, 10, 20? 10, 28. 10, 28. Mine was 980. And it was a studio apartment. Um, it was in Columbia Heights in D.C. And it was super cute. Same thing. It had great closets, good lighting, cute little setup. I was so proud I'd found this place in my budget. I went there during the day. There was a new Target down the street. I was like, oh, there's even a Target. Like, I don't have to worry about going to do errands. And, you know, all in good. I lived there for like a week before I was like, oh, shit. I should have visited the apartment at night. Yeah. Yeah. Corner store across the street from my apartment. It was constant gambling, constant drinking. Mom and dad came down after I'd lived there for a couple months at this point. And I'll never forget, there was a guy trying to steal the catalytic converter off of Kiki's car. My car was underneath the car. And the guy I was dating at the time was like, oh, that's what he was doing. And, you know, it's very common car theft move. I drove like a Honda Accord. So um, the amount of times, I mean, that place was like, thank God for friends. And again, the sister community. Our friend Ken, who was yeah. our sister Lindsay's friend, and Ken was older than us. You know, he was an adult at that point yeah. in my eyes. He had he had his own home. He owned his yes, own home. he owned his home. So let's yeah yeah, we, yeah. my first apartment owned his home. So yeah. um and Ken is like you know family like yeah. he literally thank God for him because while Morgan and Lindsay were living over in Glover mm. Park at that point, this is like in Northwest side of DC, but. You know, this is totally a, this is a cab area. ride. It's like yeah, yeah. 10, 15 minutes away. And this is and free Ubers. There's no getting to you. Yeah. Quickly. And he, um, one, he would let me do my laundry there. I was like scared to do laundry in my own apartment building. I was like, oh, this looks super sketch. He would let me park my car there, especially mm -hmm. when he wasn't there. Like he had a carport. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget one night in particular, I was coming back to park on the street and my building, it was, there was like two apartment buildings for the apartment complex. And my, the building I lived in had a, it was like came to a point at the corner. So anyway, you could go around the back of the building to find parking, right? Mm. It was like a one way, one of those do a loop. And I'm coming around the building, trying to park. And a guy walks out in front of my car and it was raining. Oh and I remember God. he had on a, a hooded sweatshirt and he he walked he stopped and I'm like okay you know I'm not reacting and he turns and he gets pulls out a butcher knife oh my god I fucking forgot about this but this was horrific and he looks me dead in the eye and is like just he kind of points it at the car at this point I can see this guy is like I not don't know even with it probably didn't even yeah I don't know what he's yeah. on but I'm also like Blacked I mean to out. have a butcher knife it's one yeah. thing and then he turns and he looks 
at the apartment building like adjacent and there was someone that he was like pointing it up at them but at this point i'm like what the fuck fuck? i freak out thank god the guy i was dating at the time was in the he was like visiting for the weekend was was in the car thank god and but i like am frozen i'm like and so i call ken and i drove over to his house and i think i I, oh, I stayed there that night because Ken was out of okay, town sure. and Lindsay, I think yeah, he was in Australia or something and Lindsay was still house sitting and oh. she came there that night to do her own laundry. It was like, I'm just going to chill up the house and just whatever. I think she actually was staying there to watch yeah, it for yeah. And so I just went and stayed in the guest room. Thank God. But that's when Ugh. I decided it was time for me to break my lease after this was many incidents I had at the building. Oh, many. And I'll never forget. I mean, you and we were, you're talking about you moved out when it was violent. Yeah. It was also extreme bed bugs. Like that place yeah. was that not in my apart- apartment, but like bil- in other in units. In other and units. my, thank God, my neighbor, she happened to be same situation as me. You know, she's single, living alone, and also not feeling safe. And her and I also, when I moved in and we were like, oh, yay, cute apartments, we were splitting. We had talked to each other. We were splitting using the internet. Mm, nice. One, because I couldn't. That was a whole other thing. Couldn't afford but it. it also, like, they wouldn't set it up. They didn't even have internet, like, set up correctly there. I was, like, in this battle with Verizon. That, oh, my yada, God. Yada, yada. That ended up screwing up my credit. It was another 20 lesson. Um, how? Um, mm. Whatever. Cable company. Oh, have leaving a bill open in one account. And then you're like, oh, that was done. I moved. And I'm not taking out any credit because I'm not buying anything, <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, your credit's been dinged. But um, but anyway, just that living in that apartment, I was miserable. Like literally anxiety. Um, I like couldn't sleep. Kiki would come and stay on the weekends with me a lot too and stay there. And even during the week, because she had, would commute. But my rent was 980. I was making 35K. My student loan payment at the time was like 270. My car insurance was like $88. And then, you know, I had groceries, going out, whatever. I was on a tight budget. Tight, 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 And I say the money because I remember at that age always being like, oh, even five years before me, the sister made more or had more. The headlines stay the same. (laughs) You think when you're 20 right now, like, I'm not going to be able to buy a car. I'm not gonna be able to buy a house. I'm never gonna get out of this debt. And like, it doesn't look great, but you can figure it out. Oh, 100%, you can figure it out. And that's, I mean, I think that's what, I mean, God, that's what we're here to tell you today. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like it's tough in the beginning. It's, you're counting the pennies. And that's the thing too, that I I can't get a handle on. And we'll talk about this in, you know, as well in our next episode, but I also can't get a handle on like how much worse is it, you know, for the current generation in their twenties financially, because, you know, truly they're, you know, I see the, I mean, no things are more expensive, but I do see as a recruiter, the compensations going up. I just don't, I don't, I find it hard to believe that it's much different than me having well, 10, that's 20 I, rent right. and my base salary being like 25,000 and then, you know, being hopeful to make like 32, 33, right. 34, 35 right. commission right. my first year. Like, you know, that's, that's the thing too. And I, I think maybe it is that I don't know because like you're saying, everything is more expensive, but I don't mm-hmm. know the comparison. Yeah. If it's really. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I think in the end, it's just, or not in the end, but like talking about finances, it's that. It's that it's always going to be tough when you're young, unless you're that lucky person that but has like, some ridiculous, you know, career out of college. Like you're going to have to budget. You're going to have to be, I recommend like when cash you were 20, hand. when you were 22. Yeah. What, when you're like, okay, first apartment, you know, I have bills that I have to pay. How did you approach it? Were you like, I just like, I have a budget, I'm going to write it down. Really specific. Like I'm talking like the money was so tight that it was, you know, it was the, the, and I, you know, sometimes look back and I'm like, I always was into 
clothing as a kid even you know he's always into and I never minded like you know going to like the little thrift store in town but it wasn't until you know I moved to DC and I had access to really go into like the vintage shops and stuff and the thrifting and I loved that and I loved the fact that I was going to be creative but I also You're loved that money. I was saving money like I that's, was able to that's get that's true a, I was able to get you know, if it was something from Buffalo Exchange and I needed just a basic top from Gap, I was spending a couple bucks. Yeah. You know, like that was a lot of money saved. You know, right. I could get a cute outfit and then I would find designer stuff. I mean, I got a 40, I paid $40 for a Dolce and Gabbana. <laughs> I was laughing because I knew length, what you were going to say. Full length, purple coat. Purple coat that I still wear constantly to this day. Heavy like winter, like winter, fall, yeah. beautiful coat for $40. That is true. That's a good, I mean, and I know now like thrifting is trendy, whatever, but still like more trend, you know, for, yeah. But that you were always into that because always you did, especially and for I your that it line of work, longer. you always well, had to be, had dressed, to be dressed, dressed. I had to and be then on the weekends, meetings. you have to have your other wardrobe. Right. And exactly because there was no, there was no remote. That was not a thought. Yeah, where I was always work. in the startup life. I was so, always the one wearing jeans and Chuck Taylor. Right, and I never was. I was always, you know, I had to go to business meetings or meeting with, you know, it could be anyone. It could be an executive. But regardless, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. So then you're in there you and you'll take a bonnet. And I'm looking cute. And I'm like, if I'm going to have to wear clothes, making I'm going to make it look cute. Making it, 25K and yeah. make it look good. And so, yeah, I would, I would thrift. I would go to the flea markets. I would. And so because the budget was so tight. I mean, it was down to knowing exactly what I was going to spend and saying, like, yeah. I remember putting the Excel, I remember putting the, the, whether it was Excel or it was just the list that mom and I put together. I was like, do you think I can do this? Cause I like could not oh, find a roommate. I remember. Yeah. And I was like, uh, and the roommate, the, some of the places where you even could live with a roommate, like the, the space was sharing disgusting. a bathroom. With sharing a bathroom. Know, and I'm I like, can't. can I do this? And she was like, I think you can. And like, I figured, I mean, I'm talking about, I had such little money that I couldn't Dude. even pay to have my car. Yeah. License plates changed over and changed. You sold your car to me. Yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't, I didn't even sell it. I gave it to yeah, you. Yeah, you gave it to me. Yeah. Because I was like, I, I took you over didn't the have payments. any money. Yeah. And I was That's like, this true. is a good very car, nice. yeah. which ended up kicking us in the ass, but yeah. it was okay. Kiki still drives hers. Cause that's what I thought I got. Yeah, I know. But, you know, um, we'll, we'll tell the lemon story another day, but you know, I was like, Hey, this is a good car. If you're still at home, why don't you take over the payments? And, um, and yeah, I got, I like, I literally would park when I had a car, I parked my car in this bank parking lot because I worked in Bethesda, Maryland. So I, in Bethesda at my job, because I had to go to all these meetings and drive myself around, I got a car space in the parking garage. That's right. So I would park my car at work during the day and then I would park it in the bank parking lot at night That's because so, I knew. Oh my God, I totally forgot yes. about that. Yes. And I'm telling you, I lived in the heart of the city and this is how much of a hustler I was in that mode. I never was scared of it that I was like, there's only six, eight, pace. there might have been at most six spaces. This is a DC yeah. bank. Yeah. And I confidently was like, I am always going to. Yeah, but to did you have to like set your alarm and get up? Because they would toe in there so now. I, when it first, they did, I was part of the problem. They did not tow for years while I was there because no oh, one ever parked there. Okay. So I would park there. And then the other thing that I would do is if it was after, so the bank, you know, was always closed by five. And then the, the um, neighborhood parking would start, it was like seven or something yeah. or eight. So I would park there. Then I'd move it onto the street. Then I'd move it back. Sometimes I'd leave it overnight. I had oh, the routine God. down. I can't. The city parking, that's, yes. that was the best part of moving out of the city. Best when I had a car, city. like getting the yes. car back, when I finally exactly. got rid of it. You get rid of, but and that's parking. why we got rid of our cars. Yeah, though, the because, parking game can't. But yeah, so we, I mean, it was, you had it down. I mean, I had it down to a science. And then when I, you know, got laid off during the recession, you know, no one's hiring people. I worked at a a staffing agency there are no jobs so clearly you know right. and so we got scooped up by this other agency and that's another story but um you know who 
had no debt, so they were able to float through the recession. And so it became, I was like, okay, well, I'm still in a commission-based job, so, but I have a job, and they're giving me a base salary. <laughs> like, now I need is food. Now I need is food. So I would make, make friends with the bartenders, always be super social, and I would, you know, be like, okay, I'm going to get, Lindsay and I would split, like, a sandwich and fries, oh and then God. they would give us free drinks all night. Because and literally, you guys I would get, like, a rotisserie well. chicken and, like, a, a box of chicken. wine. Yeah, and, like, I would get a rotisserie chicken. Chicken from Whole Foods, groceries. and it would last for yeah. I mean, a, a rotisserie chicken would last me for oh my god, at least a week, a full week. I could make eggs. Oh, same. Last. We would say I that make too. Eggs we and can lettuce make, last and lettuce because no joke. And this is not being like when you were. I I was. I think I just. It was my last. I had just graduated college. I was living at home, and you had come home that weekend or something because we were going to have a mom and dad were out of town we were going to have a party or whatever yes okay yeah. and I remember our friend James being like oh my gosh Morgan looks really thin like her arms are like nothing and I was like yeah because she can't afford to live no, I like, mean literally this was she's the like recession, eating y'all. salad off of the this whole food's just, hot bar because so, it's by weight and that's what so like this wasn't just a time when it was like oh I was young and I had a young person's salary I was young and it was during a recession so there was no money everyone yeah. was poor I mean I was getting calls during this time from grown men I felt so privileged mm. and lucky to not have children I was getting calls from 40 50 year old men saying I have a family, I beg you, I will take anything, $15 an hour. I just need something more. Because also through our agency, which we were, it was a great agency that I worked for because they also made sure to provide benefits to oh. the candidates because you could essentially buy in to the fact that we were our own company. And so I had like good. Yeah, this is also. They covered more, they covered more of yeah, my. Yeah, 2009. The people had to, right, they had to buy into yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't have health insurance affordable. when I graduated it college. Was, I shouldn't say affordable. Like it wasn't, it, they weren't covering insurance like they were covering full-time permanent employees like me. Right. But you were able to buy into it and they were giving you. Yeah, like, where it your was, premium is not insane. It was insane. premium is not crazy because this was before we, this there was no Obamacare. Obamacare. Exactly. So it was, we were a good agency to work for. Right. That's, and it was huge. I totally forgot about that because that is true too. Now, if you are Gen Z, that's another huge thing. You yeah. talk about what stacks up. You didn't have health care. Mm -mm. Until you had a job, you couldn't be on mm -mm. your parents' health care. That was you, not a, a thing. It was a really that, you were really lucky if you could stay on your parents' health care in college. If you yeah, were in college, a situation you that you could, that was pretty. I don't know if the it, law was universal. Was, I would say it was not. That was not a yeah, universal it was, thing. It, it was dependent 18, upon right. the company and the insurance, mm -hmm. and it. But I'm. That's why I'm saying like you could get lucky and you could be on your parents insurance i was definitely on mom and dad's insurance yeah insurance in we were lucky in college and like we said but in the not other everybody side, had we were, that. yeah dad worked for a union a we union. had excellent insurance and that was the thing you could have if you're dependent um or but if someone was 18 and in college, college. Yeah. it was not that whole until you're what obamacare is 25 26, 26 27 i'm pretty sure it's 26 yeah. yeah so that was not a thing it was we were lucky while you're to get working through 22 yeah and then no. it was get that was part of also why mom and dad like we were not there was that no was why it was a to, rush to get a job to get a job Exactly. And that is there was that's no time to fuck around really and just interesting. bartend. If there's yeah. a correlation now, I would love to see stats on that of like Gen Z. That's a great stat. Actually, here we're going to in jobs. Wanna, I want to pin don't this too. Require insurance because, because they can have insurance because for their parents. this is and this is where I'm so annoyed with the that we're not going to go not down hating on Gen Z. No, 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 I'm no, no, just no, 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 no. That's not where I'm going. Um, the PR for the Biden. Um, campaign, which is now the Harris campaign. I'm sorry, it has been terrible. I'm like, you all need to remind these Gen Zers that are voting of what it was like. Yeah, let me tell y'all. Let me tell you. Have me on the campaign. You know, like that's the stuff that like they're forgetting Gen Z when you think like, oh, I'm so pissed about these one, this one topic, and I'm going to so yeah. fo deeply focus on it. Like, that's where they're messing up, where they're not explaining some of these things that were not that long yeah. ago. And that is that's not a large. That's a, you know, anyway, so that really, that was stuff that really affected 
yeah, my that, wallet, that was, the people's wallets around me that I was, was really, I felt scary. very privileged. It was scary, but I felt very privileged. I remember saying this to people, like I felt so privileged yeah. to be able to just get rid of my car and just have to worry about myself and, and my sisters. Like Lindsay and I would, we would run tabs for each other. There would be moments where I was a little more flush. Like she got, we both yeah, were because laid there off were layoffs. multiple there times. There was layoffs all the time. I mean, there's still are layoffs now, but I think like, yeah, that's the, that's a millennial, right? Mm-hmm. My one colleague and I, we laugh that, um, which is like the life of a millennial where we we were joking the one day we both could describe each other's careers without knowing what you did. We were like, yeah. okay, so you graduated this year. It took you a year to get a job. You probably took a job that you were like, okay, yes, and. And, mm-hmm. you know, then you got into this field or then you were worried about getting laid off. Then you finally get to a bigger corporation. You think there's stability and there's layoffs, you know? Like, that's... Um, no, exactly. Um, that's that's the reality, and I think that's where the work piece. I'm so interested because it's like you're saying with, you know, the younger generation, where it's not only that they do have Obamacare and they do have access to more because of their parents, but they also are able to live at home or able to live wherever because of there's more remote jobs. Well, that... We had no but, option but, to stay just in our parents' home and still have a good job. Like, right. you had to take the risk. Right. Because I did drive. You know, we all took those those X amount of months driving and saving money. But you four couldn't, hours, four a, hours day a day round trip for remember, a year and a half from yeah. Emmitsburg to D.C. Not because I wanted to, but because that was I my only... I, I couldn't... I had to save enough money to be able to be able to put down, you know, my security deposit, first month rent. And I had my student loans kicked in a couple, what is it, like two months after you graduate or Mm -hmm. something. And like you're saying, I didn't have health insurance. So I just was like, I'm going rogue because I couldn't afford to pay for health insurance in a private plan when I was lifeguarding. Because I lifeguarded then at the retirement community into the winter. Yep. And it, you know, I didn't have that option. Well, I was trying to apply to jobs and things. And a lot of jobs, like you're making the comment about recruiters or at a staffing agency, but I remember years later into my career having to, for the first however many months, I wasn't, you didn't get health insurance until oh, 90 well, days. Not, not only did you not get health insurance, but remember when that's another thing, This the younger generation, and this isn't, a, again, this isn't hating on, but this is the awareness. This is of, awareness. It's just like what was given what to was us given that to wasn't us. there that can be taken and, away. Yeah. And to respect it and to know that your vote matters. Yeah. And like, those you, things it's not the status quo for. of like, those yeah, things I get health insurance. For. No, those things are fought for. And, but the same thing, of even um because god that just started in that people's that there were certain states that started the compensation policy of you have to post the the oh, compensation for yeah, the job that's, a, that's very and where you can't it because it would have been in 220 i was doing it at my one consulting company 2018 2017 and so but for a younger generation that started working you know during covid times you're not realizing that that wasn't accessible. And mm. what the other law was, you can't ask someone, what do you currently make? Oh, yeah. Everyone would ask us. What do Everyone you currently would make? ask us. And there were times and where people you want to back would, a young employee that's just desperate for a job into they a also, corner. They also would, they were, you knew that they were allowed to check your W-2. It was very bizarre. That was recent because when I very was bizarre. a recruiter, you could still ask yeah. because I used to take that opportunity to coach especially people that were coming into um, public sector from the military. Mm-hmm. Those poor military, newly getting newly acquainted into the public sector, I always had a conversation. I asked them the question. I would say, like, what are you targeting? Mm-hmm. And they would be like, oh, I don't know. I'm just happy to get, and it would be like $30,000 less than what is even the job was put, like, what I knew the mm-hmm. lowest salary would be. I was like, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I only asked, I wanted to ask you that because I'm curious, but like, would you mind if I gave you some coaching about that? But yeah, yeah. the fact, like that's what we're saying. It's not like everybody got screwed on that question, not just women. No, everybody, everybody. And, um, you know, so that's where, again, you know, 
we really, God, I remember having to fight so hard. I realized a new guy that was hired onto my team, um, like a year after me, and I had already been proving myself and, you know, really working hard, realized that he, you know, had gotten this base significantly higher than me. I mean, these were mm-hmm. all things because there was not nearly the open conversations. Um, anyway, so I say all of that because the work piece, like I feel like that's a piece where if I could go back, it would be be more open about compensation do the research be don't just because they're they tell you on the resume or excuse me in the job description what the job range is the you know the compensation range doesn't mean that that's exactly what's going to be paid like you still have to yeah understand your research negotiate it might be lower it might be higher yeah, what's on know? the job like, description is not Bible, you yeah, know, yeah, it's not Bible, and especially if as they go through the process, maybe they realize that the job needs to be changed, and um, you know, there can be all these things. And I say that because just because it's posted, I feel like you know, people need to understand they still need to develop comp- confidence around having those salary uh, oh, conversations. Oh, totally. But that's the thing too when you're saying that about like confidence around salary conversations, and because I think the things, or at least headlines, that we can have in common too with you know, the younger generations that are starting into the workforce and the headlines that we saw too, which is like, bad job. You know, you hear all the things, the economy. Of course, they all went through the COVID jobs and everything. But like, it teaches you how to be resilient. Because if you're starting when there's nothing there, when there's nothing on the barrel to scrape for, Mm -hmm. and you are applying to every job that you see come through that has like, I mean, I was just trying to get literally any job. If it said, if I was qualified and especially if it was like, must have a college degree. But the thing is, I wasn't just applying. Yeah. I mean, I didn't wake up and say like, I want to be a recruiter someday, mommy. I was like recruited yeah. to be a recruiter and then realized I could make money. Yeah. And I realized I couldn't, I, I was I, not going to be able to afford the bills. This is not chasing dreams. Doing, and yeah. I'm not saying don't do that, but sometimes it's like. Sometimes you have to do both at and the same time. And that's not just Gen Z. Sometimes you have to that's, make. That's no, not that's unique. Every, that's, that's everybody. Not unique. But again, that's what that's we're saying. Everybody. You don't figure out your 20s. Hello, Hello here you, you are. You will still have an issue. If you don't figure it out in your 20s, you will still have an issue in your 50s if you've never figured out how to yes. manage and confidently be financially yes. independent. And how to hustle and get a different job. If you're like, oh, I've you been at a job for 10 years and I hate still being here. Money. Okay. At another do job, you have a gun maybe. to your head? Right. Like, are they, what's the con? Is, is it at will? Like, you know, but like have a LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like have a LinkedIn and make sure that your LinkedIn is and always that, ready. People are like, of course, obviously. No, no, dude. No. And, and 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 use the LinkedIn, not just to one, put yourself there. I always say get your ego stroked because if you're not on the menu, no one can order you. Yes. So it feels so great when you're not looking for a job. And you get reached out to on LinkedIn by recruiters or whatever or anyone. Because one, it's like, okay, it's some confidence building like someone else. But two, even if you're not looking for a job, I'm always like, especially if you haven't had to. Now, for me, I've had enough interview experience. I don't Mm -hmm. need to just randomly take an interview of something that I have no interest in. But for a lot of folks that have been in a job, there's some people that like have interviewed twice in their life. Yeah, or maybe have never interviewed. And that's, you know, you know, but absolutely. And so And I'm saying that like people that are way into their career. Oh, 100%. Um, you know, or people that still aren't confident in interviewing that are way into their career, you know? Um and because the game is always changing, you know, that there that was a that's a change up, you know, when we are now able to post the salary and all these things. You know, that's something that everybody's got to get yeah. used to. Yeah. Um, but that's that's my thing, too, where it's like, and I'm not saying this is unique because it is a hard market out there, especially it's probably, again, millennials. It's like if you have the right amount of experience, harder, right, in some situations mm. to get another job than just being mm-hmm. like, we need anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, we need an intern level. It's always, but now you get paid if you're an intern. <laughs> that's also another right. thing. I never got paid as an intern. It was so rare to see a paid internship. 
That's why I didn't fucking do them. Exactly. That was a privilege thing. I couldn't take off a summer and go to New York. I Who's going to pay for them. that? Mm-mm. I couldn't take I couldn't take off and live at mom and dad's and not work. Mm-mm. I had to have, you know, that was going to screw me for college. Right. But it's interesting, though, because it is like you're saying, we're like, oh, my gosh, we, we go through those moments. But me starting out, you know, 2009 graduate. So it was like it was a recession. You were a you know I started out a, right one you, year before the recession yeah you were a recent grad and then I, hire I got, exactly. in the recession so off. no money losing jobs trying to be like what the heck but, so but starting your career at that point you like i said you get that grit you do become resilient and then i joke all the time but of course some of it was the different industries i worked in being with startups and whatnot I joke that it's like if you're always prepared to be fired or let go. That's where it is. That's the layoff. Mm -hmm. If you're always prepared for a layoff, then you're always prepared. And that is prepared because you can still be strategic even in the midst of a layoff. Have your resume up to date always. Do, you know. And have net and always be networking. Always be networking. I've been laid off. That doesn't. But my if you look at my LinkedIn, it looks strategic as hell because it was just right. because I was laid off right I always made I was always ready to be laid off so right. I was always networked I always had an idea of what the next move would well, be well that's the other thing and then especially once you get more under your belt like when you are younger in it and you need and you have that first layoff and maybe you've only worked at one company you're going to have to do more of that cold outreach on LinkedIn for networking right like literally use it as that tool see someone in this industry or hey i'm trying to buy here like do do that slide Mm -hmm. into their dms i mean i hope that's a given by now to folks but then as you get older like i might not have to do as much cold outreach because i've got that network built up so where you may be a person that's like oh my gosh linkedin people treat it like social media now i don't want to not everybody does though i I know i'm just saying some people who don't have to really touch it for their jobs Mm because you and i are in industries when you're in sales and a kind of relationship Mm -hmm. management you have to use linkedin but other people could really completely avoid it Mm -hmm. for their jobs and if you completely so that's fine if you're like i'm on linkedin when i need to be but then you better be over here in your other networks you know in person and going to the things and you know keeping yourself keeping yourself in shape is what I call it like interview no, shape totally totally um but so that's my only like now I can say that because I'm on the other side because I'm 37 well, and it's also it's and not I've, but you know oh absolutely it took a long time to get here let's a just long say time that there. but also what I want to say is well yes my moves have been strategic and you're like well that's great that you real you know you found something you were good at and you you know you wanted to do that but what if you like want to make a shift? And I would say it's still the same thing. Yes. Because even if you want to make a shift, you are going you are more likely to be an attractive candidate when making a career shift if you're if the previous career you were in, you were still impressive. Yeah. That's if true. If you're a teacher that you were like, I was teacher of the year and I yeah. developed da, 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 and Great. I can see learning and par- development I, curriculum. Exactly. I can see those parallels. Sounds like you'd be making a great training pl- program. Exactly. And even if it's not starting exactly where you want to start, I can give you a shot in one of those entry level positions where I would rather have you than someone that's only been in the industry right. for two years. And sadly, because teachers don't get paid enough, you could probably get someone and take more of a risk on them, right? Where exactly. they're willing to take a lower salary than someone else with that many exactly. years of but So my experience. point is just too, it's the, whether it's relatable experience or just being able to say, I can fucking grind because, yeah. and I can make something out of, if I can, it's like this, it's like, truthfully, it's like what I think about for us at this podcast. 